Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do more like of a personal um, story time. I just wanted to tell you how it was like for me when I was 16 and pregnant. It all started when I met my boyfriend. I met him, I met him when I was a, I want to say sophomore. I was 15 going into 16. We met, the yada yada, <laughs> and I remember, I'm going to fast forward it, I remember my junior year, I used to be like super into marching band, and I would always go um, work out after practice, and I would never let my body rest, which I see it now, but I didn't back then, so I remember one day I was driving, my knee locked, and it turned out that I had tore my meniscus. So I got knee surgery. And I swear to you, it was the hardest recovery. I feel like it was the longest recovery for me. It took almost about two months. I, my doctor said I could go after like a couple of weeks. I, I want to say like three weeks. And I just cut in like I was in so much pain. And... I just couldn't go to school like I just I couldn't I tried and either it was just something new or somebody saying something or me struggling to do something in the hall or going to the restroom and it was really really hard and frustrating and I remember that there was a point in my life where I saw myself as useless and I wanted to drop out of high school so I remember I told my mom, like, you know what, like, this isn't working, I've missed, like, almost two months of school, I'm not going to catch up, yet, I, you, therefore, you know, I missed before, too, so I was, like, I'm not gonna graduate, like, I'm behind my class, there's nothing for me, like, I'm useless, and that's how I saw myself, because, you know, like, my parents had got divorced, and all that, as a little small background story, like, my parents had divorced, and... It was just really hard, especially once I got my surgery because my dad was no longer with me. So, like, he did, like, see me, you know, when I got my surgery, but that's about it. So, don't yet again, you know, I was going through, I guess, a sort of depression phase with that. But, you know, I had my boyfriend, so I wasn't so, like, oh, like, you know, daddy issues or whatever. Like, he was there for me, and, uh, you know, me and my dad didn't talk for a while, so I remember... I told my mom, like, I have to drop out, I have to drop out, and I remember I got my, uh, I used to have a brace from, like, my thigh down, so I remember they took it off and I started going to therapy, and I was going to therapy, and I was trying my best, but y'all, it was hard, like, I don't know how people do it, like, I don't know, it was just so hard, it was so frustrating, it was something that I never want to experience again it was or, just a really bad experience like i wouldn't wish that on anybody i don't want to go through it again i know that my surgery wasn't a complete success they couldn't repair everything so you know i do try to take it slow with my knee when i work out i try to go as hard as i can but if i feel like i'm gonna mess up my knee or whatever or i start feeling discomfort i slow it down a bit I remember I told my mom, like, you know what, this is it for me, like, I'm dropping out. And she was in, she wasn't in the best place in her, like, in mindset, you know, with the divorce and all that. So she was like, you know what, okay. So I remember I got my dropout papers. And I filled them out, but as I was filling them out, like, something just didn't feel right. So I remember I t I was like, uh, we had a family living with us at the time and an uh, old friend. And I remember I told her like, you know, I've been feeling a little like, I don't know, I'm like really tired and I don't know, I just feel really off because I used to have a lot of, a lot of energy back then. So I don't know, it was just, it was weird, but see, we thought she was the one that was pregnant because her mom was like, someone's pregnant in this house. and. We all thought it was her. Like, I I never thought it was going to be me. Like, I don't know. Like, never. So, I remember 
I forgot what happened that they were not here and my mom was seeing somebody at the time and that person had came over and I took a test because my friend got one for me and I took it and it was like a positive but it was like a super light positive so I was like Oh my god like is this yes is this no like what's going on you know like i didn't i didn't know so i was like eh, i don't know so to my boyfriend who was like oh you're probably not pregnant and i was like okay and so i like dropped it a bit i was about i want to say i was four days late when i took the test four or five days because i think it was on a friday and i remember i was laying on my mom's bed and i just kept feeling like a little ball I don't know if you have ever experienced this. If you have, let me know in the comments down below. This is something really rare. Um, my mom felt me at a really early stage. So I, I want to say that I felt Audrey at a really early stage because I would feel like a little ball. Like by my belly button. Like just a little ball just there. So I remember I was like, like what is that? Like what is that? Like I'm not tripping because you know I used to work out and stuff. Like I didn't look... 100 but you know i was looking like sound like good and i'm like no like that's a weird like i wouldn't have that like like it, it, I, I don't know how to explain it like it was just, i just knew so i had a gut feeling i remember my mom it was a rainy night and she was like you know what like just sleep with me like I was like, well, yeah, like, I was, I'm like, I'm telling you, I was really, really lazy, like, not even, I'd be, like, so tired, so I was like, okay, yeah, like, you know, I'll sleep here, and I remember I laid on my belly, and I just felt something, you know, and I'm just like, should I lay on my belly, should I not, like, I don't know, so I remember uh, the next day, she was in the restroom, and I was like, trying to go in and she was like what are you doing like, i'm in the restroom but i well i thought that i could get slick if she was in the restroom so i found i told her she wouldn't get up to whoop me or whatever <laughs> so i remember i sat oh that is i was like standing across from her and i was like i need to tell you something because i had hidden my pregnancy test under her little cabinets you know because nobody thinks of putting things under there I don't know if you do, but I don't. So I remember I ran and grabbed it and I, I gave it to her. And she was like, what is this? I was like, um, it says that I'm pregnant. Like, I think I'm pregnant. And literally when I told her, she was like, get in the car. We're going to go to the clinic now. I was like, what? And she was like, we're going to go to the clinic now. So I was like, oh my god, my friend was like, you told her, I was like, yes, like, because, like, in the back of my mind, even though I was 16, I thought to myself, if I am pregnant, there's a little human being forming inside of my belly. I cannot be selfish to hide my pregnancy or anything because I want the best for my kids. And for, you know, the baby that I was expecting, I was like, you know what, like, if I, I told my friend, if I am pregnant, I want to get on vitamins as soon as possible, I want to start checking my baby, making sure I'm okay, like, which baby's okay, like, even though I was 16, I just really, really cared for the baby, you know, because I wasn't just going to ignore the fact that I was pregnant and not check my baby or whatever, like, I was, like, 100%, I'm not going to lie to you guys, like, I went through so much before I got pregnant that I feel like when I got pregnant that was my light so I remember I just started like I told her when the clinic was closed and I was kind of nervous because I was like what is she gonna make me do like I don't wanna like I don't know what's gonna going on and she was like we're gonna go to Walmart so my friend got me three different tests I remember it was like a clear blue, blue digital um I think I took two of those and a first response test so I took them all three, all three, and I was sitting, <laughs> I was sitting in the stall at Walmart. And what's actually really, really funny is that there were some girls from my high school that walked in, and a piece of my wrapping pregnancy test paper fell, and they were like, "Oops, there goes another girl from da da da," and I was like, "Like, okay." And then like I remember I was sitting there. Oh my god, like, so when you take a pregnancy test, it's the worst three, five minutes of your life. Like, it's, it's like, like, you want to know so bad. Like, you're just like, 
am I or am I not? So I remember I was just sitting there and I was like, oh, I don't like, I didn't want to know, but I wanted to know. So I was like, oh, and I remember I looked down and I was like, yes, yes, in a positive. And I didn't know how to feel. I honestly was like shocked and then I got excited, but I was like shocked. And I was like, I can't, I, didn't, I can't say, like, I was happy, but I was scared because, you know, like, telling my friends I'm pregnant, telling my mom, like, telling my dad, um, telling my family, you know, telling my brother, like, it was just so hard, you know, it was really, really hard. And um, I remember when I found out, I told my mom, like, I can't drop out no more, like, I won't. It won't drop out because I want the best for my daughter or my son and that baby is my life and I know that if I go to college and I try to be someone in this world and be somebody with a career or whatever I'm gonna make my son or my daughter proud i don't care what anybody else has to say as long as i make my my children proud that's all that matters to me so i i went back in to go see my counselor and i told her you know what i'm not dropping out no more and then she was like oh like what changed and i was like I'm pregnant, like I want to go to the alternative school that we have here and she was like, okay, I'll get you an application. I got the application, I filled it out as soon as possible, like I was really trying to get a slot because I was so behind on my credits, like if, it, if they wouldn't have had accepted me, I wouldn't be where I am today and I couldn't be so thankful, you know, because I was like, I would be showing up every day after school that I get accepted, that I get accepted. And they're like, you can't be here. Like, I can't tell you, like, I don't know. And I was like, please, like, I need to get accepted. Like, I have something to fight for. Like, I know if I get the opportunity, I will do whatever it takes. And I remember I got a call and they're like, you got accepted. And I was just so happy. Not be, It was sad because you know, I had to leave my friends. I had to leave band, I had to leave everything that I, I loved at the time and but I knew at the end of the day it was just gonna be me and my child you know and my success so I remember I, I started to go to the alternative school and I swear when I got there I was not playing games like I started killing it like I started catching up I even got ahead of my class. I graduated six months before my original class and I got to walk with the class of 2016. And I am enrolled in college. Um, going in for my criminal justice associates and I feel so proud to say that because I know people give up after having a baby and stuff like that and I know it gets hard but I'm doing this video because I want people to know that even though it seems impossible, there's always a way and I promise you, there is a way. There, like there's night classes, there's really early classes, there's, you know, there's all types of classes, there's online classes, like don't put excuses, like if you want to like give your kids a better, a better future, like, you know, do it. Like, don't hesitate, do it. Because if you hesitate, you're gonna keep procrastinating and you're just gonna like, it's gonna fall out, you know? And I tell my story to people to encourage them because I was such in a bad place before I got pregnant that my daughter changed my world. My daughter changed my world. And let me tell you guys, when I was pregnant, I really wanted a boy only because I don't know why I wanted a boy. I just thought it was going to be easier and stuff like that. But when they literally told me it's a girl, like I was there and my mom-in-law was in the room. My brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, his grandma, my mama, like we were all there. And 
I wanted to cry so bad. Like, I was just so happy. I was so happy. Like, people ask me, they DM me, they ask me, how were you so happy at 16 and pregnant? How are you so happy? They're like, I'm 17, I'm 19, I'm whatever, you know, and I cannot be happy. I can't accept the fact that I'm pregnant. You know, some people get a hard time to love their baby and stuff like that because they don't know what to do. And it's like, take a breath, accept it, and figure out how you're going to go from here. That's what I had to do. Once upon a time I was pregnant, I'm like, you know what, I'm pregnant. And I'm, I have to keep going. This isn't an excuse for me to stop. This is not This is something for me to keep going forward and to keep fighting. And for my success, you know, like I do YouTube and I, I go to school. I go to college just like a regular, you know, part-time student. And that's the thing too. Like don't ever get discouraged because you're taking longer than your friends. My friends are graduating next semester and trust me by the way that I'm going, I'm still gonna graduate. I'm gonna graduate next year. Um, it should be, I wanna say fall of 19. So like, don't get discouraged. Like, I'm doing this video and telling you my story. So I hope that this story will motivate a young mom or a young couple or someone who is pregnant right now, you know, to keep fighting and to keep going and towards success because once you get there, let me tell you, it's amazing. I'm not there, but I see myself getting there because I have goals for myself. And let me tell you, getting pregnant at a really young age was hard. Um, I lost a lot of friends, friends, and I remember like at my doctor's appointments, my ultrasounds, I cut up. I want to show y'all some. I swear to you, when I saw my little peanut on the screen for the first time, it was something amazing. Like I instantly fell in, fell in love. People say you don't know what love is until you meet, you know, your child, and I, they're right. Like, it's, it's something so beautiful. Like, this is my first ultrasound. I got it at a pregnancy resource center that we have here. This little seahorse thingy, that's where my baby was at. And then this is the day that we found out it was a girl. <laughs> she was so tiny. And then um, she just started getting bigger and like I said, I was really obsessed with my daughter. Even though I was really young, I was always posting her and I was, um, I was gonna enjoy my pregnancy. I wasn't going to make myself feel like crap because I was younger than other women, you know, at the clinic and stuff like that. Like, I just accepted it. And honestly, it was hard telling my parents. It was hard when his parents found out. Um, of course, they weren't gonna be happy. Um, instantly, you know, but I'm glad that that we are where we are today because my daughter has changed all of us for the better. You know, me and my boyfriend, we had rough patches and I swear, like, my daughter has changed us to people that I'm so proud to be. Like, I can't explain it. She's changed everyone in the family for the better and she's such a blessing. Like, I would, I can't be any thankful. And I remember um, telling my dad was the scariest. <laughs> telling my dad was the scariest. And my grandma from my mom's side. It was just so scary because, like, we got in an argument, me and my dad. And um, I told him, like, oh, you're going to leave me and your grandbaby like that. And I hanged up. And, but, like, I remember... <laughs> um, I hanged up. I was all mad and pregnant and moody and... I remember a few weeks after he was like, I want to see you, and I was craving crawfish. Mm, I love crawfish. So I was craving crawfish, and he was like, let's go get crawfish. And literally, he was like, okay, so here's my dad, here's my boyfriend. And he's like, Nelly, does your boyfriend want something to eat? And I'm like, Andy, do you want something to eat? Like, it was so awkward. Like, I feel like 
I don't know if he was excited or not. I'm pretty sure he was pissed. Um, I'm okay, and then I'm gonna talk about the labor part. Um, I was supposed to be due July 16th, and um, the day before, which was the 15th, I was getting a lot of Braxton Hicks, which is like, you sort of feel what um, labor pains feel like, but then you don't. So I remember, the thing about me is that if I sleep during the day, if I ever even take a nap during the day, you know that I'm sick, or that I'm gonna get sick. So I remember, um, we went to go buy Audrey a few things, and I, uh, my boyfriend and I, we all went to a buffet, he had to go to work before, and it was like around 2.30, and my mom dropped him off, well, we did a few things, you know, in that time period, and then she dropped them off, and then she was like, oh, I'm gonna go do something, you know, I'm gonna drop you off, and I was like, yes, like, because I was getting a lot of pain, like, I thought I was almost in labor, like, I just, we just kept walking, I'm like, oh my god, like, I don't know what this is, and I remember, um, she left me home, and when I got home, she was like, you're barely waking up, and I'm like, I don't feel good, like, I'm getting cramps, like, I don't know what's going on, and I, I was already getting pains and stuff, like, the nights before, I was, like, I was already getting cramps, like, you know, the days before, but I thought it was normal, like, you know, the, your body preparing for labor, like, I was like, oh, whatever, but trust me, I was a big baby when it came to that, like, every little pain that I felt, like, before my due dates, I was at the hospital, getting checked, getting checked, getting checked, they were like, no, there's no, you're not doing it, you're not doing it, I'm like, oh, okay, I remember, um, that night, she dropped me off, and she was like, I'm going to go to Houston do a few things, but if you don't feel good, we're going to take you to the hospital tonight. And I was like, ah, eh, like, I'll be okay, I got this. <laughs> and so at the time, my mom let us borrow a car. So if I ever went to labor, you know, we wouldn't have to wake up his parents and stuff. He, he would just take me straight to the hospital because he lived right down the road, like, of the hospital. So I felt safe right there. So I remember <laughs> it was already like... 11 something and I couldn't sleep and she was like what's wrong and I'm like I thought I wasn't gonna get pains I'm still having pains like, I don't know what's going on like I went to the doctor today they told me everything was fine like I'm not dilated like what's going on so mom was like we're going to the hospital so we went they checked me but every time that I went I swear to you I got no pain no nothing like all you would play with me like I was I would be like no nurse like I'm not crazy like I swear to you I was feeling pains and like Audrey would just like play me she would make me look so stupid every time I went to the hospital so I was like oh my god and well once again the nurse goes oh you know nothing's wrong you can go home and that was already my due date because I got there like at 12 so it was already my due date so I remember I was like, oh, freaking Audrey, like she's playing games, like she doesn't want to come out, like why is she doing this to me? She's making me look like a mad woman. And I remember the nurse was going to discharge me, you know, to go home. And so I called my boyfriend because I swear we were fat, but we ate a lot when I was pregnant. And a lot of fast food, which is really bad. But I was healthy. My baby was healthy, thank God. But um, I remember I called him and I was like, hey, like, um, I'm going to get released. Like, do you want to get chicken nuggets? Like, we can eat chicken nuggets right now. Like, <laughs> when I get home, like, we're about to grab. And he was like, yeah, like, let's get chicken nuggets and then we can go to sleep. So I hang up the phone and then some other doctor walks in. I don't even know him. It was a guy. He goes, you can't leave. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you have high blood pressure. And I don't know how nobody caught that. I was like, blood, high blood pressure? We're like, is that bad? He's like, you have preeclampsia. So let me look up the correct definition of preeclampsia. So it's a dangerous pregnancy complication with high blood pressure. So let's see. What they told me is that 
my pregnancy could have gone both ways. Like, it, it was more like a high-risk pregnancy. Like, it was like, you know, anything could have gone wrong and it would have been me or my daughter, you know? So, it was just really, really scary. I remember he told me and I was like, wait, mom, like, give me my phone, give me my phone. Like, I called my boyfriend. I'm like, Andy, I'm going to go into labor. Like, they're going to induce me. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, bring the diaper bag. Bring my makeup. Like, <laughs> and then he was like, okay, okay. And he was like, Nelly, Nelly, I can't find the keys. Like, he was freaking out. I swear it was so, it's funny now that I think about it, but he was freaking out. And, um, I remember I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know. I like, I was just so excited, but I was so scared. So, um, they put me in a different room, like my own personal room, you know, delivery, I guess. So, um, I had to get induced and the way they induced me is that they had to put something up there. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to give you all these details, but they put that, uh, something up there to start, you know, with my cervix. So, um, yeah, they put that in there. It was four in the morning. His mom pulled up real quick with his grandma. Like, since she knew we weren't home, she knew something was up. Like, you know, she knew that was my due date. Because when my boyfriend couldn't go with me to the appointments and my mom couldn't, she would go. And his grandma did too, which I'm really close to his grandma. So, you know, I don't mind. I love, I love her. Um, so, I remember they showed up real quick. They were like, are you excited? And I was like, I don't know how to feel. So, like, my mom was like, I need to go to work. So, she left us. And his grandma stayed and you know once it was the afternoon because you know it was it was 12 like it was midnight so once it was like during the daytime I swear to you I was the crankiest like since I had a blood pressure preeclampsia and all that I was on two different IVs like uh, so I had the regular IV and some different one and then every um, I want to say every three hours they were poking me, like poking me and poking me and checking something. I don't know. They were putting something or check, getting blood from me. I don't know. I think they were putting like medicine in me, but they drugged me. Like, I don't know. Like I was just so drugged up all like before I had her after like my pregnancy experience was uh, not as good. Like I was traumatized for a while. You know, I was so aggravated. I didn't want nobody there. Like, nobody understood how I felt. Like, my mom was, like, telling me things like, oh, like, you can't take it. Like, shit, like, you blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, she was just putting me down. And I was like, like, oh, like, I just wanted everybody out of the room. Like, I was so aggravated. And I remember at nighttime, that's, you know, they were, like, checking my cervix and stuff like that. And at night... It, my water broke and it broke by itself so um i remember when it broke i had already asked for the epidural before it broke so as soon as it broke they went in there put the epidural and let me tell you i got unlimited epidural so my dumb self kept pressing the button and i like i feel like i overgave myself <laughs> epidural like I, I was like i could smell pineapples like i was tripping like i was like oh my god and so it was nighttime, and you know everybody's just waiting for Audrey, waiting for Audrey to come out. And uh, after the epidural, I started seeing my my um, pain, labor pains go off the charts. Like I was like, dang, I can't feel it. Yay! Like you know, I was just like a little girl. <laughs> and then um, it was really weird because my nurse, she just really kept coming in, telling me turn to your side, turn to you know turn to this side, like. Um, turn to this like she just kept switching me sides and always trying to move me and I'm like, you know, what's what's going on? And my mom was scared when my water broke because um, that's how I lost my brother my older brother I have a half brother so earlier I said my brother but that's my half brother from my dad's side But I lost in my my brother um, He was still born, you know for my mom's uh, water. It was like broke for too long and stuff like that so I was really scared. That's another reason why I didn't post when I was in labor. Like girls will always post, oh, I'm in labor. Like I didn't do that. Like I was really scared, um, you know, because my mom lost, has lost a baby and I just didn't want to take any chances. And 
I wanted to play it safe and just be comfortable, you know. I didn't want other people showing up to my delivery. I wanted it to be just family. And I promised, like, a few friends that I would tell them, so I did. But um, I remember the nurse kept coming in. I'm like, Andy, something's wrong, like, you know. And they, this one nurse, she runs in there. She's like, this has to stop. Like, this, this has to stop. And I'm like, what? And she's like, your baby's losing oxygen. You're going to need an emergency C-section. And when she said that, I swear to you, like, I felt like a ball dropped on me. I was crying. I was like, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. I'm scared. And my boyfriend was like, no, like, babe, you got this. Like, like, it's for her. Like, it's for her, you know. Like, this is worth it. Like, it's all going to be worth it. And I was crying my butt off. I was like, okay. Like, and I told the nurses, do not wake my mom up. Oh, and because his parent, it was already nighttime. It was around um, 1 in the morning. And I was like, please do not wake my mom up and wake them up. Like, I don't want to stress nobody out. I don't want my mom saying that she's going to go in there and I'm a boyfriend. You know, I didn't want issues because, you know, moms can be overprotective. So I didn't want to wake her up. So the nurses sneaked me out of my room and then they were laughing. They were like, oh my God, I feel like when I was in high school. And I was like, oh my God, girl, I'm going to get cut open. You're telling me your crazy little stories. And they took me in. And when I got my C section, it was, it really. That experience for me, I didn't, um, I know people, some people say conscious, like conscious throughout the whole um, C-section and I couldn't, I uh, blurred out for a while where I couldn't um, hear and I just saw nothing but light so that really did scare me and I remember I told my boyfriend like don't leave me, like I feel like I'm dying, like don't leave me, like um. Don't leave me. So he did it, and I remember once I started hearing Audrey's first cries, it was like I started crying. It was something so beautiful. Like once I saw her, it was something. It's a moment that you don't ever forget. It's something so amazing. Okay, so I really hope you guys enjoyed my story. If you have any more questions about my pregnancy or how, you know. I'm doing it now with school and all that. Always feel free to message me. You know, I'm never gonna tell anybody your business. Like, that's always just gonna stay between me and you. Like, um, I know sometimes people feel like they don't have anybody to talk to, so I will be here, you know, if you need me. And I just wanted to show you a few pictures of when I was pregnant, since I don't know how to insert them yet, but that is one. When I was, had a bigger belly, and this is when I was like smaller. And then if you, this is uh one of her her heartbeats. I don't know if you can hear it, but it was the first time my was actually there when he heard it, so he was so excited. This was right before I went into labor. I hope you guys can see it. And then here is the famous Audrey Herrera, and she loves YouTube, so I'll probably be making her a little channel or having her featured more in my videos because I swear this girl loves the camera, and I just really wanted to give my message out to you guys to motivate y'all to push y'all through because even though it's impossible, let me tell you, there's always going to be a way, and you're never going to be alone. There's so many programs and stuff out there that help young people. Um... Like in college, if you need a babysitter, if you need this, if you need that, there's a wig, you know, all types of things that help you out. So don't ever feel discouraged. And if you ever need help, don't ever feel bad to ask me, like, for, like, baby advice or whatever. Like, I'm not an expert, but I will tell you what I know and, and stuff like that. Like, when I was pregnant, trust me, I didn't have the best everything. Like, you know, some girls are fortunate or women are fortunate to have you know um had to struggle here and there but that's what has made me so strong and so proud of where i am and i couldn't be any more grateful for my boyfriend for my family you know pushing me and my daughter you know she loves me doing youtube videos she loves watching me she loves mocking me she loves being in my videos so i just really hope you take something from this video and i Hope to see you on my next makeup tutorial.
and do not forget to subscribe so you can see me more of me and my daughter Audrey and I'll see you on my next video bye guys